Howdy folks. Here we have another good looking plane from Banggood and Unique Models. This is the U-Glider which is a 1500 millimeter wingspan. Uh, really lightweight, really slim looking um, DLG style glider I guess with a little motor. We have really slim cool looking wings with a couple of spars that have to be glued in. We've got a little bit of a dihedral uh, plastic angle bracket there. Ailerons, nice little fuselage pod and we've got a couple of servos in there. A little ESC with a JST connector. There's the square carbon fibre tail boom. Tail and rudder, look like they slot together very easily. Uh, we have some glue, a fair bit of gluing to do, well, not a, no, a little bit of gluing to do with this model. So I'll test this glue out first before I trust it. Uh, some nice decals, some long flexi uh, push rods, and pretty decent instruction brochure as well. 1500 millimeter wingspan, that's 59 inches. Takeoff weight 300 grams, that's about the same as my DLG. Fuselage length is uh, one. 10 millimeters 43.7 inches wing load 14.4 grams per decimeter squared and I'll do the conversion put it here for ounces per square foot the motor is a 2500 kV 2208 6 gram servos 15 amp BEC runs on a 3s uh, 800 milliamp hour battery which I don't have I'll have to uh, see what I can use to start off with, I'm going to test this glue because I've had some really dodgy ones that just don't work at all well. Glue was a bit reluctant to come out, but oh, it's quite oh, it's quite dried out actually. Don't think this glue was usable. No, chuck that glue out. There you go. It's all dried out. I'm going to follow the instruction manual. First thing I like to do is get a clean tub and put all the bits and pieces in it so I don't lose them and so they're easily accessible couple of bags of bits and pieces. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is install the control horns. They go on the bottom of the aileron and they are, oh they're surprisingly sturdy. Gosh, I wish other companies would use control horns this tough and they're just sort of clicked together, ratchet in, zip tie sort of control horns. Is that the right way? Because once you do them up, you can't get them undone. Yes, so control horn goes on the bottom. There we go. These are surprisingly good control horns. I like these styles. Job done. Making sure you know which side the control horn has to go on. We have a few different options for the control horns. We've got a chopped off one and a normal one. Chopped off one, I am guessing, would be for the elevator. The instructions are a bit lacking, I have to say. Comes out the bottom like that. That looks like it would be right. I think I'll uh, drip a bit of CA in there as well, just to give it a bit of extra strength. That looks right. And for the rudder, it comes out on the left-hand side. Good, and the rudder push rod exits the boom back here so you've got that much distance of wiggle room to operate the rudder elevator exits the boom right here so i guess that's why we need the shorter chopped off uh, control horn we'll find out eventually anyway next job is to glue in one of the push rods on the wing for the aileron uh, the shorter push rod and there's a slot for it to glue into and I guess we want the, we don't want the uh, casing to extend out into the servo bay. So the casing will have to go back there and it'll glue in like that. I'm going to use medium CA and tape it down. Just have to make sure I don't get any CA in the push rod casing inside. And that the casing doesn't extend beyond this point here. I've tested the CA glue on the scrap bit and it's just sitting on the surface, it's fine. Not doing any damage. Tape it 
tape it down to hold it there while it's setting. So next up we put the carbon tubes into their dihedral brackets. The longer carbon tubes go into the servo mount and you have to make sure you push them all the way into the end there so that they're meeting in the middle and that holds the dihedral. Same with the shorter spars, got to push them all the way in. Okay, so now we can fit the spars together. They'll need to be glued into their slots there. I might just dribble in some CA once the spars are in place. That's not going all the way down. Why is that? It's like that channel isn't deep enough. So to make this channel a bit deeper, I just decided to sort of squash it down using the spar and that's going to work. Yes, that goes down nicely now. That's all I had to do. Nothing major. So now it's time to glue the spars in. Uh, and something I need to do first is actually get rid of this. Good. I've got some tape ready here to tape it down once it's in. Dribble some CA in. Going well. Make sure we can get all the way in. There, yeah, that's good. Push it down all the way. Very good. See, it started to grip a little bit, so now we're good now. That's good. That went well. Now, this shorter spar will be easier because it just slots slots down in a lot easier. Let's do the whole thing at once. Slot this down, make sure I'm central. Once again, gluing my fingers together. This model is going to be an awesome light wind slope sawer as well. To operate the ailerons we have a single servo that just sits nicely in that little servo mount and it's held in place by this little cover. This is a really nice design because it means it's easy to take the servo out and do adjustments. All right, so I'm having trouble just deciding which way these push rods to go. Go, do the linkage adjusters go out on the control horns or do they go on the uh, servo arm? So I'm just gonna try it the other way. This is more likely to work. I'm still not happy with this. I think the push rods need to come in from the other angle. But their natural curvature didn't let them do that. Okay, so I've swapped the uh, push rod so that they enter the uh, servo arm from the top. And that means the casings line up with this channel here. That works a lot better. Servo still moves around a little bit, but... You can pop some glue down in there. Seems to be the only solution as far as I can see. What I had to do is take out these push rods and sort of curve them the other way. Uh, I may be doing something wrong. I'm not too sure. Anyway, that'll work. Now for a little bit of Loctite, just to make sure this doesn't come undone. And I might as well glue the, the wing together as well. Now the hard points for the wing bolts. And the wing is done. Now we're putting the push rods into the tail boom. Looks like you thread them in this way. That's the rudder. There it is coming out the other side and the elevator goes in the end. Notice, after installation, please glue the rubber tube and carbon tube to assure the efficiency of the... So we've got the Z-Bends coming out at the same end and we've got the rudder push rod straight end coming out the side, elevator straight end coming out the back. So now I'm fitting the tail boom into the fuselage 
There's the Z bends there, Z bends. That looks like that's going to fit all right. Go right up forward. It says the length should be 541. Whew. Not easy. All right, now I've got to get. There's the elevator push rod. I've got to get that in and screwed in there. Looking at the back of the boom, uh, the instruction manual says the boom should be showing 541 millimeters, which it is here, and you can adjust that by undoing these clamps and moving the boom backwards and forwards. Glue the rudder together and check that again to make sure I'm not doing something silly. Just CA fits together very nicely. Just need to make sure it's vertical. I'll leave that to dry for a little bit, but that just now slots on the top of the boom. Right down the end, I guess. That's going to work. The boom seems to line up with that change of angle in the foam there, and there's a little sort of insert piece as well that seems to line up with the end of the boom. That kind of looks logical to me. So I'll glue the uh, tail assembly on in that position. That is good. Whoop, stuck my finger as usual. Excellent. Now I need to drill out the holes for the linkage adjusters. That's good. Oh well, it's in there. We sort of need to brace that there maybe somehow. Maybe just tape it. And of course I'll lock tight these as well. Well, in theory that's done, but I need to clip these off. These are too long. I can now put it all together and program it up with a transmitter. Don't know about the battery yet, that's a 500 3S. Uh, fits vertically, doesn't fit horizontally. They recommend an 800, so it'd be interesting. You'd have to find a battery that actually fits. So I've got a extension, servo extension lead which was provided for the ailerons. Okay, so I've got two screws to mount the wing. One long one, what's that, about 30 millimeters, and one which is supposed to be 20 millimeters, but they've only supplied a 17 millimeter screw, which is too short. So I'm going to replace it with a 20 millimeter bolt, which will work. Yep, that's biting in okay. That is fine. Okay, I've connected everything up. Push rods uh, connected into the servos here. I've uh, bought them in from the end, uh, maybe second or third hole out. I'll have to experiment with that to see what's right for the elevator and rudder. A uh, little receiver in there, ESC there, battery of 500 3S stuffed in there. I've glued this little magnet in place. That feels pretty good. Just have to put some decals on now. I might do some mods to this eventually. Prefer separate uh, servos in the wings for each aileron, then I can do camber adjustments and flapper ons and brakes and things like that. I may even try a uh, pull string setup too, which I really like for these sorts of uh, gliders, DLGs. And you get very uh, restricted access to the rudder and elevator servos too. I'd like to maybe cut out, lengthen that hatch a little bit so you can get better access. But we'll fly it as it is, see how we go. So there it is, the Unique Models U-Glider, 1500mm wingspan. I'll have to weigh it and see how much it ended up. Unique Models U-Glider from Banggood. All we have to do now is take it for a fly. Thanks for watching.